Hey, good morning everybody. It's Jim Bull. I hope you all had a great Labor Day weekend. Uh, no matter what you got yourself into, I'm sure many were doing barbecues and things like that. We went up to Miles Mountain for the North-South Shootout. Boy, another big crowd there. Sorry, I'm moving this around on you. I think over 650 racers and uh, it was a good day. So, at least till we left, we stayed through the first motos. But uh, a lot of great racing, a lot of a lot of people there. It was beautiful weather, cold overnight in the 40s. Yeah, baby, it's coming. So anyhow, uh, here I am again. We did our Proverbs 31-day uh, Bible study with Motocross for Christ in August there. And I, when I began that, I wasn't sure where that was going or what was happening. But I grew a lot from that and learned a lot. And I really have a desire in my life to be able to be a speaker, an educator, share my knowledge whatever you want to call it I don't know right now I'm just talking to a computer hoping to to make a difference in some people's lives so uh, we, we did our Proverbs things and, I, and when I started that I didn't know if it was just a once and done or where we're going so I got through that and some people asked me to keep going and I want to keep going so here we are we're gonna jump into a book called the purpose driven life and this is written by a pastor named Rick Warren from California uh, this guy, his first book was A Purpose Driven Church, and then he went on to write The Purpose Driven Life, and he's a founder, senior pastor at one of the largest churches in the country. He uh, has sold 30 million copies of this book, now the sleeves off of it, so you can't see what it looks like, but it's Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life, and I'm sure you can get this in uh, any bookstore, online, Amazon, all the major booksellers. My son found this for $2 at the local thrift store. So again, reading can be a very uh, inexpensive way to educate yourself. And, and this book is titled, The Purpose Driven Life, What on Earth Am I Here For? And it goes through 40 chapters. I'm just gonna give you an introduction to the book today if you guys wanna get a copy or try and find it online and follow along. This book is designed to help you find your purpose in life. So I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to dig into it a little bit here in the very beginning. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll start chapter one. So, And when, when Trevor gave me this book, my son gave me this book. We were at Miles Mountain Saturday night. I was laying in my camper. The rock and roll music's playing down every hill. Supercross is still racing in the background. It was late. I was tired. And I picked up this book. And with my flashlight laying in my dark camper, the first thing that I read, and this gave me shivers, chills down my spine, okay? This guy is, well, he got his genius from God. I was going to say this guy's a genius, but he got that from, from the good Lord above. So this book starts out, says, this book is dedicated to you. Before you were born, God planned this moment in your life. Kind of hit me hard. It is no accident that you are holding this book. It's no accident that you are holding this book. God longs for you to discover the life he created you to live here on earth and forever in eternity. And then he goes into some scripture. I'm just going to read that. And this is from the message uh, version. We've been reading from the NLT a lot. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. Then it goes on to say, I'm grateful to the hundreds of writers and teachers, both classical and contemporary, who have shaped my life and helped me learn these truths. I thank God and you for the privilege of sharing them with you. And that's all we want to do. That's all Rick Warren wants to do. That's all I want to do. We want to share the truth, what we believe to be the truth, what the Bible declares to be the truth about why we're here. What purpose do we serve? Why do we do what we do each and every day? Wouldn't you like to know? I'm just going through this to help you all think about your life. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn about mine, my family, people around me, the people you influence. So, um, again, I'm going to jump through a little bit of the forward of this. This is going to be kind of short today here. And then tomorrow we're going to start on Chapter 1. And A Journey with Purpose, Getting the Most from This Book. This is more than a book. It is a guide to a 40-day spiritual journey that will enable you to discover the answer to life's most important question. 
what on earth am I here for? What purpose do I serve? Why do I go do what I do? Some live in the rat race, some don't. Some of you have it figured out, some of you don't. I'm still looking, I'm still searching each and every day. That was Jim Bull. That wasn't the book. What on earth am I here for? By the end of this journey, you will know God's purpose for your life and will understand the big picture. How all the pieces of your life fit together. Having this perspective will reduce your stress, simplify your decisions, increase your satisfaction, and most important, prepare you for eternity. All I have to do is read that, this book and figure that all out. Now the answers are here. We have to do the work, obviously. Your next 40 days. Today, <laughs> today, this, is, this scared me too, and I had to use my calculator. Today, the average lifespan is 25,550 days. That's how long you will live if you are typical. Don't you think it would be wise, a wise use of your time to set aside 40 of those days to figure out what God wants you to do with the rest of your life? 25,550 days, people, that's only 70 years. I'm 52 already. And, and, and I don't care how old you are, but doesn't it seem like a blur? Where'd it go? You can think back of all the things that have happened in your life, good or bad, and you think, man, it was like it was yesterday. That's how I feel anyhow. And it seems like, you know, the old adage, the older you get, the quicker it goes. It seems like it's true. Me with my Brat Magazine, I have a deadline every month. So every 30 days I'm reminded that another, thir another month of my life is gone. This, according to this cat, I only got 18 years left. That stinks. <laughs> but I'm going to do something about my health, too, to try and prolong that, too. Let's go to 100. I want to get it. I want to double this thing. So anyhow, what are you going to do with the rest of them, of your days, whether you're 8, 18, or 80, you know? The Bible was clear that God considers 40 days a spiritually significant time period. Whenever God wanted to prepare someone for his purposes, he took 40 days. And he gives some examples here. Uh, it, Noah's life was transformed by 40 days of rain. I think all our lives were transformed by that. Uh, Moses was transformed by 40 days on Mount Sinai. The spies were transformed by 40 days in the promised land. David was transformed by Goliath's 40-day challenge. Elijah was transformed when God gave him 40 days of strength from a single meal. The entire city of Nineveh was transformed when God gave the people 40 days to change. Jesus was empowered by 40 days in the wilderness, and the disciples were transformed by 40 days with Jesus after his resurrection. The next 40 days will transform your life. That's the book, not me. This book is divided into 40 brief chapters. And, and I'm reading this to you to encourage you, because this excited me when Trevor told me about this book, because I, I read The Purpose Driven Church years ago. We did a Bible study in the church I was in when I was becoming a lay leader with the Methodist Church right after I became a Christian, right after I accepted Jesus as my salvation. But I never have gone into this book, and I understand from others it's a really good book, whether you're a new Christian, whether you're a mature Christian, or whether you're just really figuring out what's going on, man. You have you have questions, right? Don't you want to know why you're here? Whether you believe or not? This book is divided into 40 chapters. I strongly urge you to read only one chapter a day. This really hit me hard too because I've read so much in the last 20 years. And, and like my son, he reads and he, like, he hits me with stuff from these books and quotes stuff and I'm like, whoa! He's like, well you read that book? It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some of us just absorb it and some of us don't, but maybe this is the answer too. Uh, I strongly urge you to read only one chapter a day so you will have time to think about the implications for your life. The Bible says, let God transform you into a new person by changing what you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do. It's so true, man. Since I accepted Jesus all those years ago, it's just been a, a, a spiritual whatever you want to call it, growth or journey. You'll learn something new every day. And because it's in me, I'm figuring things out. So it says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do. Okay, and it says that one reason that most books don't transform us is that we are so eager to read the next chapter. 
that's me, oh, what's next, what's next? That we don't pause and take the time to seriously consider what we have just read. We rush to the next truth without reflecting on what we have learned. Don't just read this book. Interact with it. Underline it. Write your own thoughts. Make it your book. Personalize it. The books that have helped me the most are the ones that I reacted to, not just read. And that's Rick Warren. So what he's saying is we're going to do a chapter a day, and then we're supposed to meditate on that, reflect on that, and we're going to do it first thing in the morning. And I hope you all join along with me and share it with your friends. I'm going to put it here on Facebook. I'm going to have it on my YouTube channel. You can go over there and watch it and subscribe to everything that I'm doing, okay, and come back to it whenever you want, okay. But we're going to read one chapter a day and then reflect on it and then grow from it. So I guess at the end of every chapter, there's going to be some features. There's going to be a point to ponder, a verse to remember, and a question to consider. Um, and then there'll be some dis discussion questions. He goes on to say that he's praying for us, um, that uh, he hopes that we get a great experience from this. And he is quoted, uh, and this book is biblically based. Okay, this isn't Rick Warren talking to us or Jim Bull talking to you. Okay. Uh, the best way to explain God's purpose for your life is to allow the scripture to speak for itself. So in this book, the Bible is quoted extensively using over a thousand different verses, a thousand different verses from 15 English translations and paraphrases. Okay, a thousand different scripture verses are quoted in this book. Okay, and I'm doing this to help you guys think, but it, it's, and I add my little spin to it, but that's just me. I'm trying to make it a little interest, a little more interesting or <laughs> get you to laugh, who knows. All right, remember, tell God your plans if you want to make them laugh. Um, but anyhow, 40 days, 40 chapters. Um, there's a covenant here that you can sign to, to say, hey, I'm going to do this, you know. And uh, then the last page before we go into chapter one, we're going to finish up here uh, with this. is two scriptures, okay. And I'll ask you to think about this and pray about this today and then tune back in tomorrow. What on earth am I here for? Proverbs 11:28 says that a life devoted to things is a dead life, a stump. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 from the New Living Translation. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the, by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they go right on producing delicious fruit. I'll read it one more time. It was pretty long and I stuttered in the, in the middle. And I want you to think about this today and let it guide you through your day. And that, that excites me, it just what I got from it. But think about this with excitement. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They are like trees placed along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they go right on producing delicious fruit forever. Love you guys. Hope you check back and are interested in what we're doing here. I want you all to have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow morning.